finally, look at those roots. We have work to do. And we are probably going to divide this orchid as well, or at least cut away the back part because we can see a nasty pseudobulb back there. And also because I am not inclined to grow on specimen sized orchids, space saving, I have to factor all that in. So a division might not be so bad. The thing is, haha, she's a bifoliate. <clears throat> and she's not very pretty on the back end. Anyway, welcome to my repotting of my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday, which normally should just be, well, pretty, pretty straightforward. <laughs> Famous last words, right? So, anyway, should be pretty straightforward, even though she's a bifoliate. What I'm banking on here is that I've got new roots growing. So no matter what stress I put her through, she is going to either dump her roots, which is fine by me, dump away, don't care, new roots are coming. Now she has been in this pot for about two years. I can squeeze a little bit on the bottom. I brought my hammer just in case, especially in the back where there are no roots. Maybe I won't need my hammer after all. The back part here is pretty loose, but a little bit of a massage. And if I can be radical, then what I'm gonna do is just yank her out of the pot unconventional but that's the best way to go about it because this is the favorite timing of repotting is when an orchid is just growing root nubbins i don't have to be so concerned and tiptoe around what has already grown into the media uh, see if i can jiggle her out gently without breaking the pot ideally i would like to use it again division or not uh, i've got a bit of give here Oh, and it's a beautiful day outside, as you can see. Maybe I need to use the hammer just for a stint or two. Let's see what we can get rid of. And I always pot the pot, sorry about that, away from any root growth to tip out the media in the opposite direction and see how much we can release. You see that even though we are talking about gently squeezing a pot, there's nothing really gentle about squeezing. <laughs> You're gonna be crushing roots in the pot while squeezing. So gentle, mm, I would say, is all relative. But she's gonna give C or C. I've got quite a few dead roots in there. That's to be expected. Let's see, can we do this? Are you gonna behave? One thing I don't want is the orchid coming off loose and then I have sort of a projectile of an orchid in one hand and pot in the other, and it goes everywhere. Okay, bring out the top guns here. Whatever roots were cut growing out the bottom, they're dead. So that's not that that's holding it back. It'll be an option to check there as well. What's resisting right now is the microfiber and the roots that have grown into microfiber. I win though, she's coming. <laughs> there we go. Done and done and this pot will be cleaned up. Woohoo! Come on you. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Bifoliate two years in Lekka and self-watering. I think that this is a great result, even though she may dump what is happening here. I doubt it, I doubt it. I mean, there's one thing we can always say, repot gently. Again, <laughs> that's relative. When you go into an orchid and you disturb it, meh. eventually, if things get a little bit heated, who's gonna win the fight? The roots, the media, or the microfiber in my case, I just rip it out, I win. Even though there is a good root attached to that microfiber. You see, the thing is with new roots, oh, the guarantee of nothing really going wrong, it's just ideal. There's such a liberty about repotting and cleaning up a root ball when the new roots are, let me get you in closer, at nubbin stage, that is my ideal deal situation for a repot. So yeah, I could now pretty much just go with my snips and clip away at the base. 
but I'm trying to think ahead. <laughs> the workload of cleaning Lekka. <clears throat> yeah, I like to be a little bit diligent right at the beginning. So <laughs> I try to get some of the Lekka out first. Otherwise, I'll be picking away at it. And it's really, really tough going cleaning up Lekka when you haven't been a little bit more prudent right from the get-go. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel and have never watched me repot, quick disclaimer, I'm pretty radical when it comes to repotting. For me, the most important thing is the health of the pot for the next two years, maximum three if I can't get into the pot within two years, you know? Schedules, timing, weather, and all that business can interfere with what is ideal for a repot when you take it from the perspective of inorganic and self watering. There's got to be a timing to it, which is no different than organic media at all. But I don't, let's just say, I don't go around babying a root ball. Mm, long term is my interest and if that means I have to be a bit drastic at this stage then yeah you might be seeing things that you think yeah makes you squeamish so just a quick disclaimer on that part but if you're here for the first time thank you so much for being here if I don't cover anything specific that brings any questions you may have as to why I'm doing what I'm doing and I don't circle back on a thought, please address that in the comments. I also have a complete playlist of everything semi-hydro where I deep dive into more specific little subjects. So for this video here, I'm just going to do a general repot and a cleanup and not really go into that many details, but I'll show you things as I find things that I see are interesting, I'll point them out to you and we can take it from there. In the meantime, wow, here's another thing I'd like to show you. This orchid was always plagued with scale, which I pretty much took care of. Never felt that I had a scale issue after the garlic alcohol and all that. And look at where they're hiding now, right in the back here. And that, my friends, is not in focus, but you can see it's gross. So while I'm not trying to get all the lecker out, what I'm trying to do is clear out the base where I'm going to be taking off the back part of this orchid Clear that off lecker so that my secateurs don't run into anything hard. <laughs> They've already gotten pretty beat up in the past years. Just trying to make sure that I'm removing lecker that could interfere with a cut. That is the point of this exercise. Because what I'm not going to do is cut all the roots individually. The roots in the back are dead. One thing I did want to show you though, however, is check this out. Okay, mind the gross scale bit. Look here, uh, where are you? I just saw that. And now it's gone. There you go, look. Even though this root looks dead, excuse you, you see even, hello. Even though that one root looks dead right there where my finger is, it's starting a new growing tip. Now, I'm not going to try and preserve that. That's not my intention, but I can assure you that not all roots always are dead when they appear to have the same color as, let's say, this dead root right here. I found that interesting. Anyway, I'm going to potty on because I still have some more leca in the rhizome back here. And I want to get in there before I go in with my secateurs. And we're going to talk about the scale situation as well. I'm going to follow up on that. Okay, let's assess the situation here. Sorry for any dirty hands. Right, you see, it would be very easy to go in now and start chopping off roots. I'd like to save myself the time at the beginning because depending on what we find and how this turns out, this could possibly be a good division. It is a very ugly division, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But first of all, let's get into the cut situation. Where do we want to go? All this I want off. Ideally, I want my funky growth to come off as well, but yeah. 
it's too close it would only leave me with three good bulbs in the front and i want more than that see would be nice to get rid of the burnt leaves but this orchid still has issues in the front with the leaves my climate is a bit too cold for it in the winter so the leaves will always struggle a little bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in back here and see that we get this cut away first and then see what we're up against let's get these taken care of just let that evaporate and let's talk about the scale right this orchid has always had scale but in recent years anything that you see white that couldn't be identified as scale that is all dead stuff now so she has been scale free in adverted commas to my eyes for over six to eight months now and then you see this and then you're going okay so we're going to be dealing with a lot of cleanup not just from you know getting rid of the back bulbs but we're finally attacking as well the source of the scale now some of this is dead but these are alive these are alive these are dead so we're going to take away their hidey place from the back right evaporated good stuff let's go we're going to cut into here and then we're going to check the rhizome because this orchid was in a parcel package shipment with a fusarium orchid i don't think she has fusarium she's been growing well for me over the years oh but it never hurts to check it never hurts to check what have we got on the other side dang now the rhizome itself might actually look brown simply because it's old very old wood what have we got up here can i okay i'm going to be uh yeah i'm going to be <laughs> sterilizing my secateurs one more time let them evaporate and i'm going to be preparing Fisan 20 and we're going to make another cut quick disclaimer though this is not to say she has fusarium the uncertainty is pushing me to get the Fisan out give her her soak as mentioned this orchid was in a package that had fusarium in it that orchid died and several others have been contracted with fusarium so just to be on the safe side Fisan jacuzzi a go-go right we're going to make another cut so let's have a look see I took a picture of the cuts. I looked at them closely because my eyes aren't that good, just to see if the image, when I could expand the image, if I could see anything. And it doesn't appear to be, but you know, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna be guessing. So I wanna go in one more. There's an eye here. I can cut this one away because that one is still attached to here. So if I go at a diagonal like so, we'll see. Secateurs are sterilized again, even though it's the same orchid. I'm just a little bit picky about that, especially when things are uncertain. No fear, let's go. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that makes me feel a lot better. What do we got in the back here? That's the old cut. That's the new cut. Well, that pretty much takes care of me not being able to use this as a division, answers that question. But what we're gonna do now, instead of soaking it in Fisan with all the nasty roots on, I'm gonna be taking the roots off not adding any cinnamon until I'm completely done with this orchid. There's still a lot more that we have to do. Thank you for your patience and your time here with me. Dead, dead, dead. Okay, let's go. The back, we can be radical. Back roots, usually very dead all the time, <laughs> most of the time. And then we can move in bit by bit. See all that? That's why I wanted to cut the rhizome first because it takes off a whole chunk of roots that we don't have to be fiddling through and looking at. So we're now getting into some more live ones. And the question will be afterwards if I'm going to keep them. For the time being, I'm just gonna be prudent, you know, 
take off what I can see is dead, obviously, leave what is alive on, and then I still have the choice and the decision that I can go in and be a little bit more radical, clean up more of the even alive roots, giving me more aeration in the pot. So that's what I will be doing here. You see, there's a branch that's dead right there. And this one, you see another branch dead. This one is totally dead all the way to the back. And I'll just inch my way in bit by bit. And when I reach a kink like this, here's a branch, it's really, really loose at the end. Even though it's still viable, I'm taking it off. That is just going to deteriorate anyway. There we go. I'm liking the look of this much, much better. Just wondering about a few more little details, like these, you know, salt encrusted roots right here that have died. But you can see how much I've taken off, including, let me show you, including a whole branching section of good roots. So you see the top looked dead. I've got all this branching, except for these guys. These are alive but they were more towards the back as well. So I eliminated that, giving me more room for aeration. Now, let's have a look. We're gonna clean up the rhizome. I have a feeling I bashed this root right here. So I might lose that one. We'll just keep going because this orchid will produce more roots. First, I'm gonna give it a good spritz of plain, pure water. In my case, that is RO water and see what we're up against right in the middle if there's anything more that I can identify and remove. All right, we have an eye back here. Woohoo! Possibly we can trigger that one to grow. Uh, we can also see if we can't give it a little bit of a spritz right here. Just to clean up and see what we're dealing with. Mind the root, sorry about my hand. There we go. Let's see, that looks pretty okay. There's one root kind of tucked in there. Uh, let's see if we can get at it. <laughs> it really makes no difference at this point anymore. <laughs> you know how it is. Oh, there's a little strand there. I got to get rid of it because, you know, why not while we're at it? And I'm just, sometimes when I get to this point, I, I have to stop myself because everything's fine the way it is right now and suddenly you do something because you just want to go that little bit further and boom, you make the biggest mistake and a normal straightforward repot suddenly becomes, ah, you know, frustration. Now, another thing I want to point out, you see all these ends back here. You see where the root has been exposed, the layman died. Yeah, we're going to be Figaro for a moment. There's no need for those and I just, <laughs> You know, you can just go fussing with the root system indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, because by the time you reach that point, you've taken your entire root system off. But look, let's see where we have these ends that are exposing roots. And that's where we'll just go in, check out the kinks, get rid of those, preferably over your garbage butt tub so that work isn't as difficult afterwards. <laughs> Have your eyes set to the chameleon setting, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, you see this one? A bit long. And we'll just keep looking around at the base. More often than not, we can just go... <laughs> I found another one. <laughs> okay, careful, careful. This one is tucked in right at the base where new roots are growing. Let's do that. And let's go in with closed scissors, use them as a tweezer and pull out the root. Now I've got Lekka in my garbage bucket. Oh, well, it'll be a fiddle to get that out. 
<laughs> you know what? Check this out. Um, <laughs> there's another one right here. Okay, slowly coming in with the closed tweezers. We don't want to nick anything that we want to keep. Chop it off. There we go. You see? <laughs> anyway, it has a lot more cleaner look to it. The dead roots have been removed. We will have air back in the pots. Hopefully we don't lose these two because of the manhandling, but this is the stage I prefer to go in. If they had been all the way down here, oh, then, you know, especially with a bifoliate. Right, what we're gonna do now is just give it a little bit of a jacuzzi in some Faisan 20. Even though that eye is swelling, I don't care. It'll find another way if it doesn't like it this way. If this were to slip into the soaking bath, then I'm okay with that. The health and, well, my peace of mind is kind of more important at this point in time. And we saw another eye at the back. Right, 20 minutes, bubble away. <clears throat> There's another one. Okay, <laughs> I'll be back. Isn't it amazing? 20 minutes later, uh, perfect time of cleaning up cleaning pots, preparing things for the last phase of this orchid. Now, let's get her out. Let's get some cinnamon on that cut. And, oh, don't drop that water. Not that I'm gonna use it again, but at least get her potted up. And just wet my paintbrush a little bit so that I can be a little bit more targeted as to where I put the cinnamon. Thank goodness for no wind today. It's not going to blow everywhere, but in general, I do prefer to wet my paintbrush just to get some of it on. And then bit by bit, it's going to dry off. It's all kicking off in the hood right now. Whoa, I just spilt some. Let's deal with that straight away. Even though those roots may say goodbye to us, we're gonna try and hold on to them for as long as possible. Okay, there we go. And just rinse anything I spilt off. Next step is my support. You see, previously the orchid was potted up against the back. So the support was there where the oldest growth was. Now we need to move that support into the middle. So all I do is just make the circle smaller. <laughs> there we go. Let's see now if it's in the middle. It is good enough in the middle for me. Right, let's get the lecker. So we have been very, very horrible to the roots up until now. Pretty radical. Now we're going to get gentle and be kind to them. What I do is I fill up my pot with water completely. Before I've topped up my pot with fresh RO water, there was water in there prior, which I'm reusing, that had calcium and magnesium in it, which the orchid was soaking in prior to me taking it out of the pot. So. We've got all that ready to go. Now let's find our orchid and see how we can position her into the pot, preferably into the middle because we've just made that cut in the back and it would be nice if we could trigger a new growth. Sorry if that just jiggled the camera there. Let's see if we can get her in. I don't need the support to support the orchid. That's not my intention. It is there for eventualities. Let's see that we get her into the middle. Fandangle the support to suit our needs best. Try not to crunch the roots that are here to the left. So we've come up against the resistance because there's still lecker attached to the roots and I'm gonna keep it that way. And the roots themselves are quite solid as well. But this is how I'm going to have her in the pot. Let's go. And now you're going to see why I fill up my pot with water. Now this is a gentle repot. The taking out of the pot was radical. This is now gentle. And you'll be able to see how the lecker gently falls in and amongst the roots. I'm not bruising the vellum from here on in. The damage may have already been done to some degree, but now the lecker just falls in with the buoyancy of the water instead of just crashing in around the roots, you know? And then it's so much nicer just with one little jiggle in the area and let them fall into the gaps much, much easier, much, much more gently. 
when it comes to lacquer and lava rock, this is what I do. I submerge the pot with water and let the lacquer just find its place much, much easier. Now holding the orchid and the support, I'm just gonna give it a jiggle. Let's lift her up and see where we're at. I'm so mindful of those root tips now, but yeah, that one looks compromised. Okay, I don't need to tie her up. She is secure in the pot, even though she looks wobbly. It's just her top heaviness of the structure where she's going to live. It's not going to catch any wind. So I'm not going to be tying her up. It's not gonna get me anywhere doing that. What I'm going to try and just make sure now is that the new roots that I hear have space between the surface of the leka and where I want them to go. So I'm not filling around there just yet. But you know what? This orchid, this repot, <laughs> we're not done yet. All that scale that was on the back there, I may not have removed it all. I may not be able to remove it all. But as a prophylaxy, like, you know, just in case, even though it's diluted very much now with the water, etc., I am going to just paint the base with garlic alcohol. Just in case, some baby eggs we're very, very good swimmers. <laughs> you know, the survival of the fittest of their kind and that they just stay and find a way to start all over again. So just at the base, I'm gonna be painting her. Now she smells of cinnamon and garlic. <clears throat> the cinnamon will stay much longer than the garlic smell will. That's for sure. There we go. Cleaned up, repotted, aeration re-established in the pot by foliate root growth at least we have that even though <laughs> you know we try to be careful with the root tips but yeah right now let's get that mask back job done well our job is done it is now up to the orchid to respond and continue to grow this one really took me through my entire paces after not having done a repot for so many months. Everything was included <laughs> in this repot. Cinnamon alcohol scale, Faisan soak, you name it and across the board, it had to be taken care of on this repot. <laughs> Unfortunately, the division is not going to be something I'm going to propagate. That is going in the bin, but my Fushu glory happy holiday is now at least settled for another year, maybe, hopefully two. That is always my plan. Minimum two years, maximum three. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Your time is so much appreciated. It's good to be back repotting orchids. Plenty more to come. <laughs> so look forward to those and join me on the next video. I would really, really appreciate it. Have yourselves a beautiful day. One condition that you'd please stay safe and take care. Bye. there not because it needed it <laughs> but that one growth back there yeah i didn't like the way it was leaning over like that makes my shelf life much easier <laughs> bye